The Ebola death toll in West Africa now tops 4,500. The spread of the deadly virus shows little sign of slowing there. Hospitals in the hardest hit countries are overwhelmed. Medical workers in Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone are getting infected at an alarming rate. Elaine Cajano sat down with an American doctor who recently returned from the front lines. Elaine, good morning. Good morning. Nahid Bedelia is an epidemiologist at Boston Medical Center. In August, she traveled to Sierra Leone on a volunteer mission with the World Health Organization to care for Ebola patients. She's now sharing her experiences and training others about to deploy overseas. So the next step is the hood. So you're going to lean forward. At the CDC's the mock side. Ebola ward in Anniston, Alabama last right? week, so Dr. Nahid Bedelia showed medical clinicians how to get in and out of their personal protective equipment, or PPEs. And just be aware not to touch your boots. Bedelia knows firsthand that these suits pull out, and this training can save doctors' lives from the Ebola virus. Were you ever afraid for your own safety? First time you do anything when you walk into this environment or anywhere else, you're going to be scared. I'd never seen patients with Ebola. In August, Bedelia, who is director of infection control at the National Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratories at Boston University, worked inside this ramshackle Kenema government hospital in Sierra Leone. Flooded with as many as 100 Ebola patients and lacking basic resources, the facility was forced to turn away patients each day. What was a typical day like treating these patients? Your time in the unit is limited because of the exhaustion that occurs while you're in this personal protective equipment. Um, you start sweating the minute you put it on. It is unbearable because, you know, I'll give you an example. It's a developing country. Electricity goes out all the time. You're in the unit. You're treating a child. Electricity goes out and it's the dark. You leave that child and you know that that child may not survive. To be the physician in that moment with that patient, it is the hardest thing you'll ever do. Bedelia says personal safety is the number one priority. The epidemic has infected more than 400 healthcare workers in West Africa, killing more than 200 of them. Did any of your fellow healthcare workers contract Ebola while you were there? At Kenema, while I was there, um, two nurses, um, two lab technicians, an ambulance driver, and the last physician got the disease and died. Was there anything that you said to yourself every day to kind of keep yourself mindful? I was in the tent one of the last days that I was there, waiting, um, taking care of this man who was uh, older and he was very, very sick. You know, over and over again, what's your name? Tell me your name. And he kept mumbling the same thing over and over again. And then I finally leaned in, and what he was saying is, I'm nobody. And the reason I have had the strength to do what I did is because he's not nobody. You know, those patients are human beings, they are families, they are parents, grandparents, kids. And you are seeing entire families getting wiped out from this disease. And that is enough. That was my motivation. Now, since her return, Dr. Bedelia has also been speaking at universities to answer questions and to push for resources for West Africa. She could find herself on the front lines again very soon. She hopes to travel to Liberia as soon as next month. Wow, she's incredibly courageous. She is. And she does actually worry about one thing, though. She's been watching this debate over travel restrictions to West Africa. She's very concerned that if, in fact, there is some kind of restriction, that healthcare workers are not going to be able to get in and out and stop the Ebola virus at its epicenter. That's why we're here. Yeah. Thank you very much.